three years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, I stood right here at the invitation of two of our church. One of them was my wife. I know both people care about me, love me. They said, it was after a service. They said to me, they said, Randy, Pastor, you know that you have totally lost your voice. You can't sing anymore. You just cannot sing. <laughs> and I admitted readily that I've been having troubles. I've been having troubles during that period before hearing. There is a relationship between what goes on here and what goes on, you know, it's important. It wasn't just from one hearing, over a, a month, months and months, finally they were driven, my wife and this one other to come to me and say, you know that you can't sing anymore? Well, you know, you wouldn't think it likely, but music is pretty important to me. Still is. Was very important. I like music loud. Maybe you like music loud. I like music very loud. One of the reasons lately I liked it loud is because I can't hear it. I turn up, I take the 1812 overture with the cannons going off, and I like it loud. Then when I'm alone in the car, I turn up the vinyl, I like it loud, the music. I like it loud. Subtle? No. Loud. Now I have it confirmed from my loved ones, you can't sing anymore. The truth is, I can't hear anymore. You know what? If you love music, if you love music, take good care of your ears. Because the ears are the gate to enjoyment of so much. And what I hear now today, you think once in a while you hear an off note, but I hear, what I do hear, it's almost always off key. And recently, in the last couple months, a few months, we have introduced a, a, a drum into our service a little bit. Nobody knows this, but myself and those in the first service this morning. But one of the reasons I'm so excited about having the emphasis of that addition to our singing is that makes a little bit more of a beat and a sound that my ears can hear. And I enjoy it in, my, in the singing. I actually do personally enjoy it. I cannot hear. You've seen my illustration of you've got the hub of a big conestoga wheel and the, the greasy axle of our lives and, and the spokes going off. One of the big spokes in my life was music. And I have thought, and I think some of you say, music means everything to me. You know what I found? I found that music was much to me, but it wasn't everything to me because I still don't hear very well. I have so many CDs and old LPs, but I hardly ever listen to them or try anymore. Music has dropped out of my life in many ways. That's a sadness. I'm glad, though, that music so important to me, and it was, is not what I'm about. It is not the center of my being. At the center of my being, I hope, is God himself, not music which he's created, but God himself. And it is not good times, it is he. It is he himself that is at my center, and is my joy. And as Hatton get writes here, this theologian, that statement I just read, you should study that, read it again and again. <coughs> what has happened has had consequences. I, if I live with something or someone else as the center of my being, why, of course, I have such tragedy and it's such a bleak future. But as he is my center and he is my heart and he is what I'm about, may I say to you this morning, in my own eyes, all is wonderfully well. I have passions and desires and hopes. I have, like you, frustrations and failings and failures. But the center is he. People do things for strange reasons. Have you ever heard of the concept of a trophy one? I'm thinking about compromise. A trophy wife is usually a beautiful young woman who is taken on into a marriage with a man who is usually a power and a lot of money. I think about 
what prostitution that is, if that's the fact. And I'm no judge of that, and nobody else should be either. That say a young woman should take advantage of such a situation for security. That's a, a form of prostitution in my mind. I think about that, and I think about God. I think how the Bible says that in many ways, our relationship as the church, between He, God, and ourselves, and the, the church it is male, it is the, the husband to the wife. We are the wife, we are the female of that analogy. We're that also, by the way, individually. He is our bridegroom. We are the bride. What kind of relationship do we have? Did we come to the cross and come with our sin? Or did we, like many, there was a crowd and we walked the aisle just like everybody else? And we got the name Christian and we voiced that many times. But Jesus Christ never entered into our lives. And essentially trying to live their lives as a Christian without God in their lives, at the center of their being. The music, the bad vibes, the good vibes, I suppose it's better than no vibes, or no vibrations and no hearing, but I think about compromise, I think about settling. Remember when you were in high school and you had some friends and you had you shared your dreams and really, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to accomplish this, you're going to climb this mountain, you're going to go for that. And you're, of course, going to keep track of each other so you can compare. And, of course, you never do. But you know, you look back, and you look at yourself right now, and one of your old friends could come back any time and say, Randy, Randy, you settled, didn't you? You settled for less than your dream. You settled for less than the past. I'm sorry, I can't call it back, but you... Of all of us, you settled and set, set yourself satisfied with less than you might have. You, any of us, have the potential. You, any of us, have the opportunity. Look at you now. Now, many of us, we're that way, and the things variously in our lives. But how shameful and how tragic when we are less than we might be as regards our God. And key to this is priority and placement. Is he positioned in the center of your being? And is he what you were about? Are you living Jesus Christ centric? Central, central leanness. Think about it. I order a drink. So that of course. Put too much water in that, it dilutes its effect. The fizziness is less, the taste is less. It's noticeable. The enjoyment is usually less. Oh, oh well, I'll drink it anyway. Compromise. Think of the way we cut ourselves short or let ourselves off easy. Leanness of soul. Leanness. How I envy some of these young men who lift weights, and exercise, and stretch, and they're fit, they're lean in body. At our house, we are not vegetarians. And on our diet, we have four people in our house right now with three different diets going on in our house. Pity the Rose family right now. And we eat meat. You know, two people handle virtually every piece of meat past Rose gets in our house. And each of those two people is determined to get rid of more fat on that piece of meat. You know what makes meat the best tasting thing that it is? It's, it's the fat. And so by the time I get it, it is lean, which pleases the nutritionist, but doesn't scintillate on my tongue, does it? And so I eat it. Leanness. Leanness of soul and relationship with our God. I put in the bulletin a quotation from an old.
old man, apparently many years before Matthew Henry, who quotes him. Dr. Henry Moore said, what is Christianity? Well, Christianity is that period of the wisdom and province of God wherein the animal life is remarkably insulted and triumphed over by the divine. I think about that. You know how I preach heavy. We are not animals. We are not. We are not animals. We are made in the image of God. We are not animals. But unfortunately, we live too much like animals sometimes. Ephesians 2, verse 3, the lusts of the flesh are very animalistic. They're very animal-like. It's easy. Did you notice the word? We haven't insulted. Insulted them. I put this question, how long has it been, O oh Christian, since you have insulted the animal life around you? Around you! You know, to get rid of the good times, or get rid, rid of the flesh in us being the dominant thing, we might have to rebuke that part of us. We might have to rebuke the good life. We might have to rebuke these other things that would take that place. Hopefully not loved ones. But the thing is, we need to make sure that at the center of what we're about is worthy of all acceptation and all worship. And sometimes to empty that place out and put in there, we need to be insulting to what is there. Spurn that which attracts you that is of the flesh. Say no. Say, I'm going to do better. I'm going to seek the best. Now Ephesians, to close. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 17. 417 of Ephesians. This I say, therefore, write Paul and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, that's how they're doing it, having the understanding darkened, no, 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 not you, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance, let's give them that ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts. Amen. None of that for you, who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. That seems to be our world today. Verse 20. But you have not so learned Christ. Christ is different. Christ is different. And friends, but he's the center of our being. That makes all the difference. And I ask you, Christian, have you settled? Have you a rich spiritual <coughs> personal life? Powerful things are going on all around us. Isn't the answer still Jesus? First. Your marriage, your home. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your workplace, your career, your cubicle, your desk, your neighborhood, your floor, your apartment, your room. Is he all? Is he the center? Isn't Jesus first? Isn't that what it should be? We can do this. My neighbor. This life could change. By the way, my life needs to change too. Your life needs to change. A Christian needs to be open to changing that God will do in their life. We must live with Jesus as Lord, as the center. And I believe that all is at loss. Do you believe that? Are you seeking him with all your heart? Two verses to close. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. You know this verse. In all these things, big troubles, even death. In all these things, writes Paul in Romans 8, 37. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. There is victory. We will receive his, at, his recognition as being ourselves conquerors. Well done, well done, conquerors. All of it through him that loved us. These are not hopeless days. And then to close, Philippians chapter 1, verse 20. 
And verse 21. Hey. Look at especially verse 21. Paul writes, For to me, I don't know about you, but for me, says Paul, for me to live is Christ. And living doesn't matter compared to that. To die is gain. Maybe I should add to my analogy earlier. Some of us, the thing is life centric. As long as I'm still stepping on and living, as long as I have still existence, aren't we mostly in this room, all of us, old enough, experienced enough to know the answer is not I'm getting old? That may be a little bit of dessert if we could be old. It's not age or longevity, it's every day that counts. Every day with Jesus. And, and Paul appreciated that should his experience here end even suddenly and violently and disgracefully be on the other side quickly with Christ. But he lived here always with Jesus as the reason, the meaning, and the center. So verse 21, for to me to live is Christ and to die. Gain. Plus, let it happen. Hey, is Jesus Christ <coughs> your Lord? Yeah. Our Father, we pray your blessing <coughs> on every part of this service, and in particular this message. For those in this room who do not know anything about what we've taught, but maybe they sense their own sin and need as we even listed the Ten Commandments for all the world. Would they try, perhaps trust Jesus as Savior right now and turn from their sin? And then for us who have been believers for a while, certainly with some pride carrying the name of Christ, but not very faithful to it. Lord, maybe some would acknowledge today in this hour, it is true, my frustration, my failure is not because of God, it's because I've deprived Him of the rightful spot, the rightful place in my life. Good times, myself, these and others have been on the throne of my experience and not God. Father, forgive us and cleanse us. And beginning today, each day to come, by your word, by your spirit, Lord, consciously as we can, trust in you for everything. Lord, by faith, Make us to grow in advance. Change the le leanness of our lives and the leanness of our souls into glorious, life-filled health for the glory of Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.